Hey, everybody. Mmm. 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 Oh. Oh, my gosh. Mmm. Oh, my gosh. I, I know. I don't like the background here, but I'm so excited. My friends, I'm so excited. I went to um, the market today. Imagine that. <laughs> and I made an appointment. Let me start over. Hey, everybody. How's it going? <laughs> Don't answer that. Um, life is too short to answer rhetorical questions. Hey, everybody. Sean MP. Nay. Kennedy. Um, recovering college professor. Um, I was an English teacher. Still am, actually. Um, actually, I'm a specialist in complete. That's short for comparative literature. The problem we're facing here as a so-called democracy in the Union States of America, my term, if I can be so bold, is that we have people in Congress who are too dumb to understand what going on. Right? Um, for instance, this idiot woman who kept saying infatata the other day, it's like, what was she thinking about? Empanada? Was she thinking empanada when she was saying infatata? Number one, it's intifada. People, I'm just looking around at my pretend audience. I'm practicing. I'm... Um, booking a trip uh, back east, as they say out here in the wild, wild west. I'm going to make a visit to the Gaza Solidarity Encampment. I have a lot to say to the youngsters there who are speaking truth to power, right? Uh... And on top of the numb nuts in Congress, we've got numb nuts at these institutions, right? Saying things like, um, these are just a bunch of smelly hippies and this encampment's like Woodstock. I saw somebody say this to the fucking New York Post today. I was like, I um, uh, excuse me. When I was in college, Woodstock was still widely revered as an iconic music moment. It was the Coachella of its time. So again, here is what I ask people. Do you want to be able to listen to music or not? Because on the one hand, Ray, we have Zionist students deliberately infiltrating a Palestinian solidarity encampment, even though they know they're not welcome there. Does that sound familiar, people? Right? That's called settler colonialism. That's a real thing. Right? This is what I don't get, people. Again, I'm practicing my hour-long show. It's called... Um, Hamilton, I do not give a fuck, right? We've got Zionist dummies literally complaining that their student colleagues are enjoying themselves while supporting the most acute human rights crisis, let alone international law crisis of our time, meaning I've been around for 47 years. This is the worst it's ever been. And they're more concerned about the smelly hippies, right? Because it reminds them of Woodstock, which is actually a cool thing, <laughs> right? Those are the students at Columbia, right? The minority, to be clear. Although overrepresented, 
right? That is to say, disproportionately represented in the discourse circulating around the question of the monolithic Jewish student who is now facing death threats. That's, that's, that's what's being said right now, even though nobody said that. Right. Yes, one student who has since apologized said Zionists should not be alive. Here's where I'm going to lean on my expertise as an English teacher with a PhD, an MFA, and a BA. As well as one who worships at the altar of Einstein. who opposed genocide. By the way, when BB says that the protests at American universities are akin to what happened in higher education during the Third Reich in Germany, the rightful question and response, which nobody is issuing, is you bombed all the universities and institutions of higher education in Gaza. <laughs> right, people, if it were up to Ned and Yahoo, all the colleges and institutions of higher education in this country would also be bombed to pieces, right? Again, I say, do you want music? Because fundamentalist, extremist, Puritan, religious, based, but not reducible to religion, ideologies like the one Netanyahu and Modi espouse, and to a certain degree Biden, and to a certain degree Trump, but which, make no mistake, both of whom are puppets in the larger game that's continually being played out. We have a geopolitical crisis, my friends. Right? This is what I would say if I were in the classroom right now. We have a geopolitical crisis Right, because as I said in an earlier one of these episodes of the Armenian Quarter, soon these are going to go behind a paywall. <laughs> it's my intellectual property that I'm executing here. I continually do it. We have a geopolitical crisis, which is that the dirty secret at the bottom of the special relationship between the United States and Israel is Rael. I think in Espanol, see? That's how it would be pronounced, perhaps. I'll check. Quizás. Both the United States of America was founded through settler colonialism. We actually learned this in school growing up. The pilgrims in the Northeast, the other ones, the non-religious motivated, religiously, the non-religiously motivated, at least in Virginia, Jamestown, they were settlers. Just like the Zionists who settled historic and historical Palestine. Again, I say, people, I've been thinking a lot about the alien genre, right? Because I was uh, pranked into seeing a very fucked up 
LinkedIn group the other day where, as usual, people are likening migrants coming here illegally from south of our border with Mexico are like the COVID-19 virus entering. I mean, people. We're people. We're people. We're people. We're actually meant to mix. That's why I always say make love, not war, my friends, right? I mean, why do you think those horses lost their shit the other day in London, right? Animals feel things before we apex predators do. That's why we're so good at killing one another, especially in organized fashion. Here's where I would like to end this short introductory framing for what's happening in the world these days. Not only did Zionists follow the playbook of the Puritans in building their city upon a hill in what is and will always be historical and historic Palestine. Sorry, the washer, excuse me, the dryer is spinning, yeah, fluffing, <sighs> enhancing my clothes. But intafada is an Arabic word. And the Arabic language is a member of the Semitic language family, just like Hebrew is. Surely, John Hamilton McHorter, that traitor at Columbia who refused to play John Cage's song for minutes, 33 seconds. Again, I ask, do you want music or not? Do you want art or not? I know, Arthur, the tone in my voice when I lecture sometimes. It can be a bit of a pain. Right, but I'd rather somebody's voice be painful than to actually be in pain, right? You see, my friends, that there's a difference between those two. Just like there's a major difference between infatada and intifada, and to mispronounce deliberately, it would seem, Intifada as infatada as that stupid ass white lady congressional person said the other day at least twice while grilling the Columbia team headed by an Egyptian woman who certainly knows her Arabic. <laughs> it's actually anti-Semitic to pronounce incorrectly a Semitic language word. Right? So how come nobody's paying attention to that? Right? Yeah. 
Just like from a river to the sea does not mean the destruction of Israel. It means the destruction of apartheid, which happened here in this country. We all lived through, those of us on this side of the world, right, in these national borders deemed the United States or the Union States of America, we lived through not just the end of apartheid here, we lived through the end of chattel slavery. South Africa lived through apartheid, the end of it. They lived through the end of settle colonialism. Settler colonialism. The people of Palestine and Israel can do it too. Right? It's really simple. If Israel wants their hostages back, they just have to stop the war. <laughs> and if Israel didn't want to go to war in the first place, which, by the way, is contrary to its entire history of existence because it was founded through terrorism, just like the United States of America was founded through terrorism because the Tea Party in Boston, my friends, was surely considered terrorism by the British colonial regime. Although again, you're welcome to rewrite not just the constitution of this country, but its history as well, by all means. It's still going to be taught in the public school system, at least here in California, another country. National borders, like everything else I talk about, race, gender, sexuality, wealth. These are all modern inventions, my friends, because for most of our existence as homo sapiens, we didn't have any of this shit and we were way happier. I mean, listen, people, I do gotta get out of here. I gotta drink some agua, you know, get a bit of a juice boost. <laughs> you know what I mean? Um, and sooner or later, these clothes are going to be warm enough. Have you ever seen a squirrel working on a nut, my friends? That squirrel, if you have seen such a scene, that squirrel is enjoying the fuck out of that nut. I'm talking about an actual nut, my friends. Listen, if you want to become as enlightened as me, eat all of your food that way, okay? And when I say eat all of your food that way, I mean eat both as eat our daily bread, and also eat as a metaphor, right? Like eating pussy, right? Or eating ass, right? To some of us, pussy and ass is the same thing. You know? 
my father always says, you put food in one way, it comes out the other way, you know, unless you don't have a mouth. Some of us aren't born with mouths, right? Some of us aren't born with poop canals. Some of us aren't born with a lot of things, but those of us who are born with all the things, well, by darn it, gosh damn it, we should be doing all the things. Do you know what I mean? Um, I'm starting... to pick up Japanese, and um, it's such a beautiful language. Kudasai! And someday I might actually have a more linear narrative to deliver, but I actually am a bit brain damaged. Not so much from the crystal meth that I did, but from um, the daily insanity, speaking about daily bread, of what I'm reading in the mainstream media, how could they be so off, right? Everybody keeps taking the charges of anti-Semitism as true. But if they're taking the charges of anti-Semitism as true, then they also need to take as true the fact that Johnson, Fox, Stefanik, all of these idiots are all white nationalists, which is a polite way of saying they're white supremacist as fuck. Right? I mean, the current Speaker of the House in the Union States of America, who spoke and was roundly and rightfully booed when he was given somehow a perch at Lowe Library in Columbia today. Before he entered Congress, he tried to outlaw gay sex people. (laughs) Now, where the fuck would we be as a culture, as a country, right, as a civilization, if gay people like me couldn't have sex? (laughs) Let me tell you. I'd be exercising my right to bear arms, motherfuckers. You see, my timing, it's impeccable at 23, oh, 10, 11, 12, 13. We'll make it a 23, 32 tape. Thank you, Madonna. I'm no Nepo baby, people. I earned my last name, Kennedy, and then I gave it up. That's called breaking bad. Yo, I don't give a fuck. Because my new target is the ice house. Does anybody know if they have an open mic there? If not, can I start up? I think they're really going to get me in Pasadena. Uh I mean, they already did get me. Reeling it in, folks. Reeling it in. Thank you, everybody, for watching. Um, I do have larger things to work on here, such as why war is central to not just contemporary social relations, right, but to the overall institutions that are crumbling right in front of her very eyes. I didn't know that all this was going to pop off like this. I am overjoyed, right? This is exactly what higher education is all about, my friends. If anybody wants to hire me, I'd happily come and work with you all again. But you guys got to reach out. I practiced the, uh, the 
the law of attraction. It's worked wonderfully for me. Mm -hmm. Ciao for now.